A graduation party gone wrong. A teenager hit by a train. This is the story of Tiffany Valiante. Around 2.30 a.m. on July 13, 2015, the police came over to inform Diane and Stephen Valiante that their daughter's body had just been found on a train track just minutes from their home. Tiffany Valiante had gone from missing to dead in less than an hour. 18-year-old Tiffany was last seen leaving the driveway in a bad mood mere hours ago, and no one expected that she would be missing and found dead. What had happened? Who did it? Did the young girl take her life? Or was there something far more sinister at play? The only clue that police had was a horrific scene on the tracks. It seemed like a pretty cut-and-dry case of suicide for the transit police force, but is that all there was to it? Friends and family beg to differ. Let's look at one of the most controversial cases of murder or suicide. It was July 12, 2015, and Tiffany and her parents were off to celebrate the high school graduation of Tiffany's cousin. Everyone was having a great time at this party. There were a ton of people around. At around 9 p.m., Tiffany's parents were looking for her to confront her about something. They didn't think much of it at first and thought she may have gone somewhere with a friend and would be back soon. Little did they know it was the beginning of a night of some strange events. By 11 p.m., Tiffany's parents started to get worried. Their daughter was not known for staying out late at night. They had been trying to reach her by phone several times, but she didn't answer. At this point, Tiffany's mother and father had become increasingly worried. Their 18-year-old daughter was out, alone in the dark of night, and could not get a hold of her, and they realized they had to do something. Tiffany's father, Stephen, decided to take a look around the house and outside. To his surprise, he found her cell phone. Even more strange was that he found it laying at the ground at the bottom of their long driveway. Fear instantly gripped her parents. Tiffany, like any other teenager, never leaves anywhere without her phone. They wondered what could have happened to her. And when we found the phone, all kinds of things are going through my head. I knew there was something wrong. Why was her phone left behind on the ground? Did it fall out of her pocket or was it disposed of? Now, more than ever, they needed to find their daughter and they needed to do so fast. By 11.30 p.m., Tiffany's parents were very worried. This whole situation just didn't feel right to them. Tiffany would have returned home by now, especially realizing her phone was missing and considering her phobia of darkness. They officially filed a missing persons report for their child to try and get as much help as possible in locating Tiffany. Little did they know that tragedy had already struck only minutes earlier. Before the police could even begin looking for Tiffany, the body of a young girl, just four miles from the Valiante home, was discovered and called in by the train conductor who hit something on the tracks. It wasn't long before the body was identified as that of the newly reported missing Tiffany Valiante. The police then had to make a horrible notification to Tiffany's parents who informed them that their missing daughter was found dead, hit by an oncoming NJ transit train traveling at 80 miles per hour. And I am very glad that I am the one that went down there because I truly believe in my whole heart that my brother would never have been able to handle it. Not only that, but some of her clothes and her shoes were missing. The whole turn of events shocked the parents, and it was now clear that they would never see Tiffany alive again. Their worst fear has come true. She was gone. Tiffany sustained major injuries when she was hit and died instantly. As straightforward as this case may seem, Tiffany's parents felt that something was amiss. When the medical examiner examined Tiffany's body, the case was ruled as a suicide. The transit investigators felt that Tiffany must have been a troubled child, and she probably planned to lay on the tracks that night. Her parents knew that could not have been the case. Tiffany had a crippling fear of the dark, she never would have walked that distance in the dark. Something was definitely not right. Her parents were more devastated when they heard their daughter's case was ruled a suicide and closed. Tiffany's mom, Diane, especially felt in her gut that there was more to this case. People who knew Tiffany also just couldn't believe it. If you follow true crime in cases like this, it is very common for relatives to plead with the police to keep their case open and find out who killed their loved ones. They never want to believe that someone they know and love so much could take their life. However, in some cases, this is unfortunately the truth. Everyone has their own skeletons in the closet, and Tiffany and her family had theirs. Tiffany, as a teenager, had been acting out lately. Tiffany and her mother had been in several fights over the last couple of months. Child Protective Services had visited their home three times in the year before Tiffany's death. That year had been a scandalous one for Tiffany. She had been caught smoking and stealing on many occasions. Plus, it was also the year she came out to her parents about her sexual identity. Clearly, Tiffany was not the person her mother portrayed her as. She was clearly a teenager getting into trouble, as some do at this age. Regardless, Tiffany was also a great person to her friends and did well for herself. How could you explain why an 18-year-old who was on her way to college on a volleyball scholarship would take her own life? This is the time most teenagers look forward to, growing up and starting their life. Why would she kill herself? 
Several details of this case seem too unusual for a suicide. For starters, Tiffany was found barefoot and wearing just her underwear. This is quite strange since Tiffany left the house fully clothed. The last time she was caught on CCTV, just after storming out, she was fully dressed and even had her shoes on. When a person walks through the woods barefoot, you should expect to see bruises and scrapes all over the person's foot. When the autopsy was conducted, however, the medical examiner saw nothing to indicate that. Tiffany's feet were as neat as if she was wearing her shoes until she laid down on the tracks. Her shoes were nowhere near the scene. So how did Tiffany get to the tracks? Did she get into a car in the middle of the journey, or is there another explanation? Diane continued to fight for justice for Tiffany and would go out every day looking for evidence that someone did this to her daughter. About two weeks after Tiffany's death, she found something. The shoes Tiffany had worn the night of the incident, as well as her headband, neatly arranged in the brush off the side of the road. The shoes and headband were not around the area where investigators' canine units had tracked her scent, indicating that someone may have indeed dumped them and put them there. Another piece of evidence that pointed to the possibility of a malicious intent was that car headlights could be seen in the last captured image of Tiffany on CCTV. Who was she running from? An important point to note in this case is how the investigators mishandled several pieces of evidence. The transit police are not the same as the regular detective unit, and they too easily concluded the case and failed to properly investigate it. Most transit police officers will tell you their wheelhouse is not homicide investigations. Virtually, Tiffany's shirt, which was recovered from her body, was forensically useless by the time the forensic analysis was ordered. It turns out that the police had stored the shirt in a plastic bag, and the shirt was now covered with mold. There was an axe with red markings that was found near the spot where Tiffany met her end. However, NJ Transit Police lost the axe during the investigation process. These things simply don't add up to a cut-and-dry case of suicide, and Tiffany's mother would continue to fight for justice. While speaking on Netflix's Unsolved Mysteries, Tiffany's mother said, I was devastated. I couldn't understand how they would come up with that. My daughter wasn't depressed. She wasn't suicidal. Tiffany was happy. She had plans to go to Great Adventure the next morning with friends. The lawyer for the Valiante family, Paul D'Amato, was also not satisfied with the handling of the case. He pointed out that the train driver, Marvin Olivares, had changed his story about the incident a couple of times. D'Amato believes that Tiffany was murdered, although it may not have been the intention of the person involved. Some theorized that she was probably chased by someone or led at gunpoint to the train tracks. Tiffany's family has continued to challenge the suicide ruling as they feel someone had a hand in their daughter's death. The troubling gaps in the investigation, or lack thereof, as the police were too quick to rule it as a suicide, are a concern for the family. When Tiffany's mother eventually won a case against the police, they were ordered to do a complete forensic analysis of the places of evidence. However, the mishandling of evidence and outright loss of others meant that the forensic analysis did not do their best job and did not make any other progress in this case.